Welcome to Ground TV, the entertainment hub for news, views, reviews, and gossip. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your notification bell. Welcome back to Ground TV. A joint police military operation is currently underway in downtown Kingston following the shooting of a man and a woman on Princess Street. Eyewitnesses told their news source that the incident took place around 10.55 a.m. The victims were said to be street vendors who operate in the area. Reports are that a gunman opened fire in the direction of the two vendors, hitting them multiple times. The shooter managed to escape on foot. The victims were rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital by onlookers. The police say a motive for the attack has not yet been determined. More details later. A policeman has been charged with assault, occasionally bodily harm, following an incident where a male was pepper sprayed at the University of the West Indies, Mona, on April 28th of last year. Constable Melvin White trial is set to commence on June 25, 2021. His charge follows an investigation by the Independent Commission of Investigations and a ruling by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions on December 30, 2020. The police are now investigating yesterday's robbery of a National People's Cooperative Bank, PC Bank, on Gordon Street, Mapen, in Clarendon. According to the police, the men who entered the bank posing as customers brandished a firearm, then forced their way through the interior doors and into the vault where they took $2.855 million. The suspect also allegedly removed an undetermined sum of cash from the two registers and a cell phone. Police said the men further relieved the security guard of his firearm and escaped in a grey motor car. The police on Wednesday recovered 130 cell site batteries during an intelligence-driven operation in Riverton area of St. Andrew. The police team reportedly swept down on an area in Riverton after strong investigative leads into reports of stolen cell site batteries. The rechargeable dry cell batteries, which has an estimated value of approximately $10 million, were reportedly stolen from a cell site across the island. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is advising citizens that the removal of these batteries from telecommunication cell sites is a serious threat to our national security, as citizens could be faced with challenges trying to reach emergency emergency services should there be a power outage. Detectives from the Hanover Police Division have arrested and charged 27-year-old Noel Matnish, otherwise called Lizard, a fisherman of Barberry Hill in the parish, with shot breaking and larceny following an incident in his community on Monday, January 11. Reports are that about 7 p.m., the now complainant securely locked up her business place and went home. Upon her arrival, she discovered that her shop had been broken into and the following items were stolen. A 35-inch Imperial Smart Television valued at $27,000, two tablets valued at US $60, a 10-inch tablet valued at $18,000, an assortment of alcohol, cosmetic products, food and cigarettes valued at $200,000 Jamaican dollars and $70,000 Jamaican dollars and US $150 in cash. Following investigations, Matt Nish was arrested on January 21st and was formally charged on Tuesday, January 26th. The police are now searching for the mother of three children who were removed from a house in Rollington Town, Kingston on Wednesday. The mother of the nine-month-old girl, a boy who is nearly two years old and their nine-year-old brother allegedly left them unattended. The children were taken to a hospital and are now in state care. Head of the Kingston West Police Division, Superintendent Tommy Lee Chambers, told her news source a team went to the woman's house on Friday but didn't find her there. It was reported that the woman went to the hospital on Thursday and visited the children. The Child Protection and Family Service Agency, CPFSA, had interviewed her. Superintendent Chambers said the CPFSA contacted personnel at the Rollington Town Police Station and told them to expect the woman with documents for her children. She has not turned up. Police were called to a property in Frome, Westmoreland recently after residents who gained access illegally were taking water from a broken main. The property owner, a Chinese national who gave his name as Mo Young, told our news source that he and his wife had been having difficulties accessing water inside their home because of residents are tapping into his main pipe. 
We were inside the house and discovered that no water was there, so we came out to investigate and discovered that they had cut away the main leading to our premises and was using it to channel water to themselves, he said. I was forced to call the police because when I called out to them, they threatened to kill me and my wife and said they would drop big stones in our heads. By the time the police arrived, he said those men had left, but residents who said that they have been desperate for water were still pleading. Tyrone Guthrie, People's National Party Council, caretaker of the Friendship Division, was among the residents. He stated that residents has been suffering from lack of water for some time because of damage to the bolstered pumping station, which supplies a section of Western Westmoreland. This is a neighboring community in Frome, and we are now trying to gain access to some portable water from this property. Apparently, some members of the community were having an uproar with the Chinese owners of the property. So I am now trying my best to talk to the Chinese to see how best I can resolve the situation and get some water. Guthrie said, but for now we have been out of water for quite some time and as you know we are faced with COVID-19 pandemic. We need water in order to survive because everyone has to sanitize and we have a large amount of older folks in the community. They also need water. Mo Young said that some time ago he channeled water from the property to a neighboring church but residents has now cut away that section of the pipe and are using it as a public catchment. He also said that he has formally reported the threats to the police. However, on the day in question, under the watchful eyes of a lawman, he allowed residents to catch you water. You basically cannot cope. You can just try to live day by day, to try to see exactly how you can survive. Coping does not work out. She was staying at a shelter, but when she was asked to leave, this is where she ended up. Life wasn't always like this. She worked in a call center for years and was doing just fine. So, how did she get here? When I stopped working in Kingston, bills started piling up and everything. Couldn't get any job where I was. Had to move. Moved, lived with a family member. There was an issue in regards to the child. He ended up eating the child, went to station. I was told that I had to leave from the family household where I was staying. And since then, I have had to be staying with some relatives or even friends and then the situation has worsened where they can no longer assist me so then I'm then on the street. The nights are a little calmer but in the daytime heat isn't the only thing she has to deal with. Majority of the time would be here if not um, around the place so to speak. Staying in one place at one particular time can be very much difficult or even Tormenting. Tormenting for her, but imagine what goes through the mind of her seven-year-old son, who also has to be roving the city like a nomad. He will ask the question why we have to be on the streets, or why we have to be, if I have something to do, why we have to walk, why we can't take um, transportation. Questions such as those. <sighs> um, there may be times when he may need something where... It's just not there and I can't afford it. And he will ask questions or he may get upset. He's a child. He doesn't really understand what the situation is. But then you'll have to explain that the funding is just not there. Compounded with all these issues, unscrupulous people went into her bags and stole most of her documents, including her birth certificate, NIS card, as well as CXC certifications which means seeking employment is more difficult. It's a dream of hers for her son to be enrolled in school, but that has been halted at least until she's able to put a roof over their heads. He should have been in school already, being the fact that the government does have um, issues in regards to kids not being in school, whether or not the education can be paid for. But then being the fact that online classes are now happening, it's a bit difficult seeing the fact that there is no um, housing facility for him to be able to be doing his classes. There's no telling how much longer Jody and her son will have to endure the pain and the struggles. The mother, however, remains hopeful. I don't want any handout. I would like to work for myself to ensure that I'm gainfully employed so I can start paying my NHD and such contributions to ensure that my child can have a better future for himself.